So let's get down to a problem. Let's actually see how you do, how you work with this path integral. All right, so we're told here that C is the straight line segment from the origin to 1, 1. Calculate this line integral. Okay, so here's a good test. Can anybody do this problem without actually doing any integration? Anyone? Yes. Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay, so, it's a, so, so can you, it's, it's a triangle. What, what do you mean when you say it's a triangle? It's got a line going up. Yes. Yeah, it, yeah, x y x y plane, right? Yep. Oh, you're, you're perfect. Perfectly right. Okay. What what I do is I'll do this in the standard way, and then we'll do it in a geometric way as well. Okay. Um, well, actually, I, no. I guess I'll just show it to you right now. Okay. X plus y. That's just in the in three dimensional space. It's a plane, right? So let's consider the plane that lies above this line segment. but below this plane, okay? There's a little picture here. Okay, you can see here, this is, this is actually our little line segment. And this line here is the part of the plane, z equals x plus y, that lies above that little line segment. So you can interpret this as the area of a fence, this is a little triangular fence, okay? So one side of this triangle. So you can easily calculate the length of the base and the length of the perpendicular height. And you come up with root 2. So at school you learn that the geometric interpretation of the integral is the area under a curve, right? With these path integrals, at least for functions of two variables, you can also have this interpretation. Right, but let's actually do the problem and work out how, how this all sits together. All right, the first thing we need to do is parameterize our, our path. Okay. So we need a vector function of one variable. And this one will do. Well, where did that come from? Well, it comes from the following. If you have a straight line segment between two points, you can use this, this algorithm here. So that's the starting point, that's the ending point. And they're multiplied respectively by 1 minus t and t. And the interval is always from 0 to 1. Okay, it's a good, a good formula to remember. Right? Of course, you don't have to choose that parameterization. You can choose, choose other ones as well. All right, so what do we need? We need C dash and then the magnitude of C dash. So what's C dash going to be? 1, 1. And so the magnitude of C dash is going to be root 2. Now, notice that there's no T dependency here. This is just a constant. In general, there will be T's here. Okay, this just, work, just works out quite nicely for this particular example. Okay? So now we need to evaluate F along our parameterization. So, f of c t, we go up here, and we replace x with t and y with t. 
So it's going to be 2t. Okay, so by definition, the line integral of f, oh, sorry, the path integral of f over c is just going to be 1, 0, times this integral here. So essentially, I'm integrating this. If I integrate that, I'll get root 2. OK, note here I've put the upper and lower limits for this particular problem. In general, it'll just be A and B. Yes, question? C? You mean up here? Yeah. Yep, so what's your question? So, okay, so good, that's a good question. If you're asked to parameterize a straight line segment joining the points A and B, right, you would put the point A here and multiply by 1 minus T, and plus T times the point B, and for T between 0 and 1. That'll give you a parameterization for any line segment joining two given points. Okay, you don't have to choose that parameterization. It's just, it's just nice and simple because t equals 0, t equals 1, they're nice, nice numbers to work with. Okay? Any other questions for that example? Hmm, okay. So... Like I said before, for functions of two variables, you can think of the path integral as the area of a fence, one side of a fence. Okay, we demonstrated this with the triangle. Now, of course, this, this has a straight base. It's much more interesting when you have a curvy base here, right? 